Hey guys, this is Adam, Motor USA. We are looking at four brand new 2010 cruisers. They're all priced right around $8,000. They all feature V-twin engines with displacements under 1,000 cc's, and they're perfect for those who want to experience the joys of motorcycling without breaking their pocketbook. So we're here, we have all four bikes here. We're in San Diego County, we're gonna go for a ride. So follow along, let's do this. Who says you need a gigantic motor and hefty MSRP for a real cruiser? Motorcycle USA recently sampled a quartet of V-twin rides, all under 1,000cc and $9,000 for a 2010 middleweight cruiser shootout. The Honda Shadow 750 has been around since the early 80s. The blacked out Phantom is its latest incarnation. Sporting a shaft drive and the smallest engine, the Honda pumped out the least power in our test. Yet for its cruiser application, the little 52 degree V-twin gets the job done, and it's quite easy to ride, with the Honda exhaust note remarkably lively. The Phantom suspension delivers a plush ride with some of the best ground clearance. However, the lack of rebound damping made for wallowing and picking up the pace on twisty stretches. The only ride sporting a rear drum, the Phantom's brakes were rated the lowest of our test. And speaking of lowest, the Honda has a lower seat height than even the Sportster and its ergos felt quite small for our taller test riders. That said, the Phantom delivers a surprisingly burly look, blacked out with a thick front fork and meaty tire. It also managed to blend in the radiator better than the Kawasaki. The least expensive of the metrics, we're sure there will be plenty of takers for the new Shadow. Harley Davidson has been training out at Sportster for more than 50 years now. We sampled the 883 Low model, Harley's most affordable ride to date. Riders get a lot of personality with the Harley, as nothing matches the rip-snorting character of its rattling air-cooled twin. Delivering the best mid-range hit, the sporty sounded the best too. A precise gearbox and solid brakes get the job done, but the biggest difference on the Sportster is its more standard riding position, contrasting the feet forward positions of its shootout competitors. It's also easily the most narrow bike, making it quite easy to maneuver. However, the pegs scrape with alarming ease and the minimal suspension travel delivered a jarring ride aboard the least comfortable seat of the bunch. Our larger test riders found the Lowe's Ergos cramped, though it's an ideal match for the smaller stature for which it's purpose built. Certainly, the Sportster stands out as the most unique bike of the bunch, both in look and feel. It is, after all, a Harley. Judged solely on looks, most test riders agree Star Motorcycles V-Star 950 should win hands down. Sleek lines, fat front tire and beefy fork, and a clean front end are the highlights of a refined package. The Star engine delivers too, with the best top end from its 942cc V-Twin, the only air-cooled metric in this class. The V-Star provides a commanding feet-forward cruiser position with long, back sweat bars. The larger ergos are on par with the Vulcan as tops for our test riders, though the star seat proved less comfortable on longer rides. The floorboards aided in rider comfort, but seriously hindered ground clearance, with the star scraping metal on simple traffic lines, its least attractive feature. Competent brakes round out the stylish package, with the star a very strong entry and solid offering for the middleweight market. Powered by a liquid-cooled 903cc V-twin, the Kawasaki Vulcan 900 Custom topped in the muscle department with the best bottom end feel on the street, though it is more refined and less exciting than the Sportster engine. Top rated in transmission, clutch, braking, and handling, the Cowie shined on the road. While one of the largest and heaviest rides, the Cowie delivered with some of the best ground clearance and its ergos and riding position was best suited to our test riders via tall handlebars and the most comfortable seat. Sporting exaggerated wheels with the tallest, skinniest front and widest rear, the Kawasaki stands out style-wise. Most found the looks attractive, though the Cowie's trim front end exposes the unsightly radiator. While the most expensive of our test rides, the Cowie still represents a bargain for entry to the cruiser realm. If they enjoy the looks, riders won't be disappointed with the Vulcan's performance.